I'm going to just share my screen real quick. And the more, if you would, I'm not going to, I was just telling everybody before we started, I'm not going to call in and I know we only have two guests right now, but I'm not ever going to call on you. But the more you want to volunteer, the better and volunteering could be in terms of chat, or I'll give you some options if you choose to participate. Let's see. All right. So, okay. Let me start at the beginning. So we're going to try to have some fun with probability today. And we're going to talk a little bit about what it is. Um, just very brief. Like, you know, I only have you for now less than an hour. So just, just a brief explanation. And then we're going to play some games together. And we're going to talk about, you know, the probability, you know, associated with the games that we're going to play. So first, um, here, let me go ahead and, whoops. So I'll, um, share a little bit about me first. So my name is Nicole, um, Nicole Clemmer, and I teach at Washtenaw Community College. Um, this is a picture of my family. So I've got kids, I've got a two, two year old, a six year old, eight year old, 10 year old and 12 year old. Um, I like to run and do yoga and cook. And this is my new, my new dog. His name is Ocho, which is eight in Spanish. Um, cause we have seven people in our family. So he's our eighth eighth member of the family. Um, he's the one, if you heard that eats all of our plants. So he's a fun, fun addition to, to the gang. Um, and so, so yeah, so that's about me. I would love to know a little bit about you guys, if you don't mind sharing. So um, there's a couple of different options. So if you want to check out, and I don't know how familiar everyone is with Zoom, but if you want to go and check out the chat, um, so there is a chat button at the bottom, you can see here, I would love to know what grade you're in. So if you could tell me what grade you're in in the chat, that would be awesome. Sixth grade, awesome. In seventh, awesome. So that would be middle school for both of you. Cool. I have a daughter in sixth grade. Her name is Sienna. Um, and it's a fun, it's a fun grade. So, all right, let me go. So this is another feature in Zoom that's really fun to use. And I want you guys to see if you can figure out how to use it. If you can't, it's totally fine. I know we tried before the meeting started and they couldn't figure this out. So if you guys can't, it's fine. But what I'd like you to do is see if you can look at the top and see if there's a view options menu at the top and see if you can find annotate on there. And if you can't find it, it's okay. We'll just go another route, but it's kind of a fun thing because when you click on annotate, what you'll see is you'll see this toolbar that looks like this down here where I say step three and you can click on this stamp button and it'll allow you to basically put any of these stamps. You can choose which one you like and you can stamp on my presentation um, to answer questions. Can you guys see that at all? And you can tell me in the chat if you can see that annotate button. So it's up view options and then annotate. You can't see it. Okay, that's okay, Eugenie. Lauren, can you see it? And if not, we'll just skip the stamp and we'll just use the chat. And then there's another way we can communicate with each other too. That's really good. Okay, so we'll just skip that part. Um, so, I'd like, you guys can just answer in the chat and then I'll go ahead and use the stamp feature to answer on here. So I would love to know what your favorite subject is in school and you can tell me more than one. So if there's more than one subject you like, tell me all the subjects you like. And if there's choices that I didn't list, then you can put that in the chat too. Science. We've got some art. I'm going to say mine is math and art. So I'm going to put stamps on that. Victor's got a math. Nice. All right. Um, let me get my mouse back. Let me clear. I'm curious how many siblings you have. We've got a three, we've got a two. I have five siblings. Lauren's got three siblings. Ajane, how many uh, siblings do you have? 
Oh, you have five. So six kids in your family. Ajane, where are you in the lineup? I'm curious. <laughs> I have right in the middle. That's awesome. I'm the oldest. Okay. Now this is going to be hard to do. Well, I'll do the stamp part, but do you have a favorite place in the U.S. that you like to travel to? And it could even be Michigan. Ooh, Alaska. Never been to Alaska. Florida. I love Florida. Oh, and I think I put, oh, you know what? I put, I have stamps from before. I was going to say, no one said Texas. Let me just clear that. Okay, we'll start this again. So we've got an Alaska, we've got a Florida, we've got a South Carolina. Good thing this is labeled. <laughs> we've got an Arizona and Florida. Both sound really nice right now. I would have to say mine is Michigan and I love Utah. I love hiking in Utah. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, cool. So thanks for sharing a little bit like um, about what you like. I've got one more question. I'm curious, do you like math? And I want you to try to use the reaction button if you can. If you can't figure that out, you can just answer in the chat is fine too. But if you can find that reaction button at the bottom, you can give me a thumbs up if you like math or you can give me a check mark. You can do the red X if you don't like math. See if we can figure out how to, how to use that. So Victor likes math. I see a thumbs up. Ajane likes math. Awesome. How about you, Lauren? No, that's okay. I always say my specialty in teaching is teaching people who don't like math. It's always a fun challenge. So either way, we're, we're all good. Okay, cool. So um, last question. Um, well, this isn't the last question, but that was the last question in terms of me getting to know about you. So what is probability? Um, and I know we only have two people attending, so it's okay if you don't know, but think a little bit, do you know what probability means? Like the word probability. Like if I say the probability that I'm going to win my soccer game later is, and I give you a number, what does that mean? Anybody wanna take a guess? Or the probability that it's going to snow today or the probability, um, lots of different examples and we'll get into some examples in a minute. Let me get my mouse back. For some reason it's not, my computer is freezing. You know what, I'm gonna stop sharing real quick and then I'll share again. And we'll see if this, no. You know what? My whole computer is freezing. Just give me one second. Shoot. Well, this has never happened. I can't do anything on my computer right now. Hold on. I can see you guys, um, but my mouse is not working. Okay. I'm going to try a couple more things. And if this doesn't work, I might have to log back off and, log and we are just going to jump right back in. Okay. So I'm going to press play. Okay, cool. So what is probability? So probability is just the chance that something happens. Okay. So like if I say there's a 40% chance of rain today, or there's an 88% chance that Michigan State will win the basketball game. I was writing this when they were still in the basketball tournament. They are no longer, but, um, or 34 chance, 34% 34 chance that Sam Smith wins the election. Um, I gave some examples of percentages. They don't always even have to be percentages. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit um, too. So there's other numbers we can use to express probability um, besides percentages, even insurance. And so um, I know you guys can't drive now, but pretty soon when you get your license, if you have to, if you're ever gonna be in a car, you're gonna have car insurance for that car. And that car insurance company is gonna to have to figure out what's the chance that they're gonna get into an accident. So they can figure out how much money to charge you for that insurance so that way they're covered in case something happens. So there's a lot of different um, areas in life where we use probability. 
So let's first start and talk about um, different numbers that we can use for probability. So what kinds of numbers do we use to express probability? So I want you, if you can, give me a thumbs up or thumbs down, or you could do the yes or the no. So how do you feel about, we're gonna start with this first number, fractions. So what we're asking is, does this make sense? There is a one third chance of picking a blue sock out of my drawer. Do you think we can use a fraction to talk about probability? Does that make sense? What do you think? So Ajane says yes. I would say I agree. Um, there, there could be a one third chance. Like if I had nine socks in my drawer and three of them were blue, then there'd be a one three out of th uh, nine or one third chance. Good. How about the next one? So decimals. If I flip a coin, there's a 0.5 chance of laminating on a head. What do you think? Does that make sense or not make sense? 0.5. So I can use a fraction. Can I use a decimal? Yeah. Decimals work too. Yep. Yep. How about percents? So there's a 40% chance that it'll rain today. Make sense or no? Yep. How about negative numbers? The chance that the team wins is negative 45. What do you think? Hmm. Ajane says no. Anybody else want to weigh in? The chance of the team winning is negative 45. Does that make sense or not? Audrey says, no, I agree. It doesn't make sense. And so we're definitely going to say a, a no on negative numbers. So we can use fractions. We can use decimals. We can use percents. And really, those are really representing the same number. It's just a different way to write it. Um, good. So. For probability, we always use the scale. So probability, the lowest prob number that you can use for probability is zero, and the absolute highest is one or 100%. Um, now, it's possible, like I will tell you, my husband yesterday, my, my daughter wanted to go to, um, to a sleepover, and she asked us at nine o'clock at night, and so my husband said no, and she asked and asked and asked, and he said no, and he said, there's 150% chance that you're not going to the sleepover, <laughs> and I laughed because 150% chance in terms of probability really doesn't make sense, so sometimes you see people use that in real life to express that it, there is just no chance, but really, the highest percentage that we should use is 100%. Um, so what I want to do is, um, let's play around with the probability a little bit in the chat, and I want you guys to see um, so I'm going to ask you a probability question, and I want you to give me a number in the chat that represents this probability for you. And you could give me a percentage, you could give me a decimal, you could give me a fraction, and there's no wrong answers. So for example, um, what's the chance that you're going to go swimming today? Tell me a number in the chat. You can use percentage, decimal, fraction, whole number. What's the chance that you're going to go swimming today? Good, yeah. Audrey, do you want to weigh in? Any chance you're going swimming today? Mm, 50%, okay. What's the chance that you're going to eat pizza today? Mm, 50%, we got a zero. Okay, zero. Got some zeros in there. What's the chance? So we've got some fractions, we've got some percentages, we've got a whole number, all good. What's the chance that you're gonna work on some homework today? Do some work today. <laughs> we've got either zeros or a hundred. Ah, Ajane says 20. Okay, last one. What's the, what's the chance that you're gonna have fun today at any point? Ajane says 100. Ooh, Victor says one. So one, remember one is the same as 100. So that's the whole number that represents 100%. We've got a 0.5, we've got an 80%. Awesome. So you guys are doing great with those numbers. That's, those are the exact um, types of numbers that we should use for probability. 
Um, so we're going to start and we're going to talk about probability with dice and then we're going to do some cards and then we're going to get into some games. So with dice, um, I'm talking about die. It is possible to get different die with, with different amounts of sides, but I'm just talking about the six sided die. So I'm sure you guys have seen six sided die before where we've got six sides and they're all numbered one through six. So let's talk about what are all the possible outcomes. If you roll a die, what could happen? So what could happen if we roll a die? I roll a die, what could come up on the die? What are our possibilities? Okay, so Ajane said you could get a three. You're absolutely right, you could get a three. You could get a, you could roll a three, yeah. What else? You could roll a six, yeah. What else could we roll? You could roll a one. Yeah, we could roll five. Paula says one through six. You're absolutely right. So I'm. let's see, I'm missing, I've got a one, I've got to write down a two, a three. Oh, I'm missing a four, a five, a six. I could actually write those in order, but it doesn't matter. So I could roll a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six. Excuse my crazy pen. Sometimes it goes nuts and it flies off in one direction. Yeah. And so what we can do when we find probability, it's really simple. Actually, we can write a fraction and the denominator, the bottom of the fraction is just the total number of outcomes. So how many different types of choices are there? We can count them. We can count one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six different choices. So if I ask you any probability, simple probability about dice or rolling a die, the denominator is always going to be six. And so if I say to you, theoretically, what's the probability of rolling a two, then all you have to do is you have to look at the choices and say, how many, how many sides have a two on them? Out of all the choices, how many sides on the die have a two? Just one side. Yeah, and so the probability of rolling a two is one six because there's one two and there's six different choices. Yeah, and so theoretically, if I roll a die six times, I should hopefully get a two. Let's see what happens. So this is what's fun about probability is there's the theoretical probability, but then let's actually roll the die and see what happens. So um, let's see, oh, and it's not letting me, let me X that, that. there we go. And I will clear all of my drawings so we can see this. There we go. Okay, so I've got this dice sim simulator here and you can choose, I'm gonna just roll one and I'm gonna make it six sided. The fun thing about the simulator is you can actually do, um, you can pick how many sides. So you can do some crazy looking dice. Um, and I'm just gonna roll it one time. So if I roll it one time, let's see what I get. Okay, I got a five. I'm gonna roll it six times and see if I get a two. Cause we just said the probability should be one out of six times, we get a two. So I rolled it once, I didn't get a two. I'm gonna roll it again, I didn't get a two. I'm gonna roll it again, I didn't get a two. Okay, this is my fourth time, I didn't get a two. I'm gonna roll it a fifth time, oh, I got a one. I roll it a sixth time, oh, I got a two. Now, if I do this over and over and over again, am I always going to get a two if I roll it six times? So when I say the probability is one six, does it mean it's always going to happen? Ajane says, no, you're right. It's not going to happen because there's theoretical and then there's real life. And I could really, I could roll this die 10 times and it could never give me a two. And so really it just, um, it depends on what happens. Yep. And so let's look at the, um, let's look at rolling a five. So what would be the probability of rolling a five? Would that be any different than the probability of rolling a two? So what's the chance of rolling a five? So our denominator is still gonna be six because there's six choices. How many, and I'll write out our possibilities up here again. So our possibilities are one, two, three, four, five, and six. If I asked you, what's the probability of rolling a five? Is that gonna be any different than the chance of me rolling a two? It's a higher number. Yeah, Audrey says no, Ajane says no, you're absolutely right, it's no different. And we can try our game again and see if, see if um, I'm gonna roll it six times and see if I can get a five. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to roll. Okay, so there's my first roll, I didn't get a five. 
My second roll, I didn't get a five. My third roll, I didn't get a five. My fourth roll, I, fourth roll, I didn't get a five. My fifth roll, I didn't get a five. And my sixth roll, I didn't get a five. So you are absolutely right that there's a one six probability or chance that I'm gonna get a five, but it didn't actually happen in real life. So we see this all the time where we have these probabilities, but then real life happens and they don't always match. Um, let's take a look, let me clear my drawings. I wanna look at some cards next and then we're gonna play a game. Okay, so if you may or may not be familiar with decks of cards, I have lots of students and I find that, so I always have some students that love to play cards and I have students who never play cards and are really not familiar with the deck. But I'm looking at a deck of 52 cards here. So we've got, um, we've got 13 different types of cards and there's four different suits. So an ace and a, um, or I'm sorry, a club, a spade, a diamond and a heart. Um, so I'm gonna, let me go get my pen here. And we're gonna, I want you to think about this. There are 52 cards in the deck total. So there's 52 cards. So when you're asked simple probability questions about cards, the denominator is always gonna be 52. So I want you to think about what's the probability that I draw a red card? So if there are 52 total, what's the chance that I pick a red? And remember from our dice example, we can just figure out the number of red. So if you count, you can just count all the different red cards. See how many we have. Ooh, so I've got some percentages and I've got some numbers. So I see people are definitely on the right track, yes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say there's 26 red cards out of 52. So there's a 26 out of 52 chance that we're gonna get a red card. If we reduce that, we actually get one half. And one half is also the same thing as 50%. So if you just looked at that picture and said, hey, half of them are red, the chance is 50%, then that's good too. Um, so yeah, so there's a 50% chance that you're gonna get a red card. Um, let's see what happens in real life if I, um, if I flip a card. So I've got a, a card simulator that I'm gonna pull up here in a second. If I can find my mouse, there it is. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna shuffle my cards and I'm gonna pick them, um, I'm gonna pick I'll pick 10 cards and we'll see how many come up red. Theoretically, half of them should be red. So I've got one red and then I'm gonna shuffle. Oh. This is my third pick, no. Nope. My fourth pick, oh, I got another red. Shuffle. My fifth, my sixth. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna go again because we didn't count the jokers. My sixth, we got another red. My seventh, we got another red. Is this the ninth? I think it's the ninth. I might have missed one. And I think this is 10. So I got six red out of 10, if I counted correctly. Um, so I actually got a little bit more than half, but it was actually pretty close to what we guessed. So not too bad. Um, let's think about, can we, can we think of a probability question where there'd be a smaller chance? Maybe not a 50% chance, but something smaller. So we're gonna fill in the blank. What is the probability? So what is the probability of drawing a blank? So think about a card that we could pick, a type of card. It could be a number, it could be a suit, it could be a different color, it could be, what could we ask a probability question where there'd be a smaller chance? Like if I just close my eyes and pick one. Okay, Ajane says ace. Okay, so that's a good one. Yep, so we could think about that. Anybody else wanna think of one? So a probability question where there'd be a smaller chance than drawing a red card. So if we look at the aces, looks like we've got four aces in the deck. 
So there's a four out of 50 due chance that we get an ACE. Yep. And that actually reduces to one over 13. So that is definitely smaller for sure. What about a probability question where there's a bigger chance than drawing a red? Is that possible? So what's the probability of drawing a, this I think is a harder question. So is there a type of card that occurs more than half? Cause the red is half the deck. So we've got diamonds, okay? So diamonds actually could be part of it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep, I think that's a good idea. We could start there. So we gotta ask ourselves, are there, so right now there's 26 red cards. So we have to come up with a probability question where there be more than 26. So there's 13 diamonds. So there's 13 diamonds, there's 13 hearts, there's 13 clubs and there's 13 spades. And we have to see if we can come up with a question that would be, that would give us a probability of more than half. So we'd have to pick something that where there's more than 26 of. Now we could add to Ajane's number, we could add the diamond and we could even say, what's the probability of getting a, um, oh, and you said ace, didn't you? Sorry, I said diamond and you said ace. I always, I mix that up, but yeah, you could do, um, and we could even add, we could even add to the ace. We could even say, um, for instance, there's lots of possibilities. We could say, what's the probability of drawing a diamond and a club and a spade. So it's okay that you, you can even add on to the probability question and ask for more than one thing. And then that gives you a greater chance, a greater likelihood. So I'm gonna stop with the cards and I wanna actually, I wanna play a game with you guys. Let's see, get my mouse back. So there's this problem, it's called the Monty Hall problem. And Monty Hall was a game show host, I think in the fifties. Um, so he had a TV show and he had a stage um, where he had three doors and behind each door was some sort of, well, he calls it a prize. Behind two of the doors was a goat and behind one of the doors was a car. And so the goal for most people is probably to win a car because they probably don't want a goat. And so what he would do is he would stand there and he'd say, okay, I want you to pick a door. And so, um, so we would pick a door. So let's say, you know, I say, I'm going to pick this first door and he'd say, okay. And then what he would do is he would open one of the other doors and he would reveal a goat and you could choose to stay with your original choice, or you could switch to the other door. So it's a very simple game. You pick a door and then you either stay or you switch to the other door. And then once you do that, then the doors are open and you see if you win or lose. And so what I wanna do, we're gonna play a little bit and I wanna try to see if we can figure out, this is what I'm gonna ask you in a little bit, um, which is a better choice? Should I switch? Should I stay? Or does it, it might not even matter. It might be the same. So true story, when I went on the, um, my first date with my husband, he asked me this question because he's a math teacher. And he said, what are you, and I actually got it wrong. Um, and then we had a fun time talking about it. So let's play this game and see what happens. And I'm going to, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. I'm gonna, um, okay. So I'm gonna pick on a, I'm gonna pick a door. So I'm gonna pick this first door. Um, and so I have this door right here and this goat is revealed. So I can choose to stay with my current door or switch to the other one. What should I do? Should I stay or switch? I'm trying to win a car. Let me think. And we'll play, we'll play several of these, so don't worry. Okay, so I'm gonna switch. So I'm gonna switch. Ah, I want a car. Okay, cool. So Ajane is like, I won the car, I'm done, right? <laughs> We need to play anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna play again. I'm gonna pick the middle door and stay or switch. We think. Mm, so I'm gonna stay. Oh, and I lost. Okay. Do you think that means that I should switch every time, or did I not do it enough? I only did it twice. Yeah. Let's try again. So I'm gonna pick the third door. Okay. So I'm gonna stay or switch. What do you think? 
you can't go wrong because you already won the car, right? <laughs> now you're going for another car. I'm gonna stay. Oh, and I lost. Okay, I'm gonna play again. I'm gonna pick this one. Oh, she says switch. I'm gonna switch. I lost that time. Okay, so we lost twice. Let's see. Actually, it records it here, which is nice. So I've won once by switching and I've lost twice and won once by staying. So, so far staying is, is, is I'm worse off with staying, but let's play again. Let's play a couple another, um, couple other times. So I'm gonna pick a door. Should I stay or switch? What do you think? Okay, I'm gonna stay. Ah, I won. Okay, so, so far now I've got, I've stayed three times. I've switched twice. Um, and I've won, well, I've won both ways. So let's play again. I'm going to pick a door, stay or switch. And switch, I won. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do this, but this has an animation, which is kind of nice. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna repeat stay. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna re um, reset this. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stay and I'm gonna do it ten times, and the computer will do it for me. So I'm gonna hit go, and it's gonna go through and it's gonna play for me, and it's gonna stay every single time. And let's see what happens. So it did it ten times. I lost eight, and I won twice. And I stayed every single time. So I lost way more than I won. I'm going to do it one more time because this is random. So who knows? We're going to do it one more time. I hit go. So it's playing for me. Mm. So I stayed. And again, I lost, well, not exactly the same results as the first time, but I got 60% of the time I lost and 40% of the time I won and I stayed. Let's see what happens. Actually, before I do this, I want you guys to weigh in. So before we see the results, do you think there's a better choice? So I want you to just take a guess. Do you think it's better to switch? Do you think it's better to stay? Or do you think it really doesn't matter? Because this is all chance. So really anything could happen. Even if there was an equal chance, anything could happen. So what do you think? So we got two switches. Okay, so now I'm going to pull up the simulator and let's see what happens when we switch. So I'm going to change this to switch. I'm going to reset it and I'm going to go. So it's going to play 10 times. So 60% of the time I won. So I won six times and I lost four. Not bad, huh? Okay, let's do it one more time. Based on that, it looks like you both are right. Okay, so I this time seven out of times I won and three out of the uh, out of the ten times I lost. So based on this, I would say, yeah, you sound right. Um, so there's a really there's a really it's a short video. It's about five minutes long that I want to play, which is kind of fun. That explains this probability question. What's it like to learn math on brilliant.org? Brilliant gets you hands on to help you learn by doing. Learn Can you give me a thumbs up if you hear the sound? The okay. And beyond. You'll solve fun problems and learn from clear and intuitive explanations. Brilliant. Hello and welcome to the Monty Hall problem with me, Ron Clark. Imagine you are on a game show. The game show host shows you three doors. Behind one of the doors is the star prize, a car. Behind the other two doors are booby prizes, two goats. You have no way of knowing which door conceals which item, and whichever door you pick, you'll receive the prize behind it. You are asked to pick a door. But before it is opened, the game show host opens one of the other two doors. Now the host knows where the car is, 
and he always opens a door to reveal a goat. You are then asked whether you'd like to swap your chosen door for the one remaining closed door. The question is, should you swap? Should you stick with your original choice? Or does it make no difference what you do? Which would give you the greatest chance of winning the car? I'll give you 10 seconds to think about it. So, what do you think? Now, most people will say that it makes no difference whether you swap or not. Behind one closed door is a goat, and behind the other closed door is the car. Therefore, the chances of choosing the car are 50-50, so it makes no difference whether you swap or not. Now, this sounds perfectly sensible. However, it's not correct. The Monty Hall problem is a puzzle about probability. The problem is simple to understand, but the answer is counterintuitive. So what should you do? The answer is you should always swap, as this That's gives right. twice the chance of winning the car. <coughs> why? Well, there are many different ways to explain why, but perhaps the easiest is to examine what your chances of winning the car are for the two strategies, swapping and not swapping. Let's start by looking at what happens if you choose not to swap. At the start of the game, you are asked to pick a door. Since there are three doors and only one hides the car, the probability of you picking the car is one in three, or about 33%. And since there are two goats, the probability of you picking a goat is two in three, or about 66%. Now, if you don't swap your door, it doesn't matter which other goat door the host opens, because you are sticking with your first choice. And the chance that you've already picked the car is 33%. And the chance that you've already picked a goat is 66%. So by not swapping, you have a 33% chance of winning the car and a 66% chance of winning a goat. Now, let's look at the consequences of swapping. Let's consider what happens if, by luck, you pick the car first time, a 33% chance. It's obvious that if you pick the car on your first go and then swap, you are going to end up with a goat. So if you swap, you're going to win a goat at least 33% of the time. What about if you pick a goat first time? Well, here is the crux of the problem. This time, there is only one goat the host can reveal. The host opens the only other goat door. Then you swap to the remaining closed door, the car. In fact, every time you pick a goat door first time and then swap, you will win the car. And the chances of you picking a goat first time are 66%. So by swapping, you have a 33% chance of winning a goat by picking the car first time and a 66% chance of winning the car by picking a goat first time. So, you should always swap to the remaining door. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. Um, this does not happen very often with games. Most games, like if you go, especially like casino games or any type of gambling, you know, well, not, it doesn't even necessarily have to be games where you're winning money. But most games, there's not going to be, um, the chances of you winning is going to be pretty small, especially when it comes to games where you're winning money. Um, and so for a game show to be like this, you don't see these types of games anymore with game shows because usually there's a pretty good chance that the person's gonna lose. So this actually, um, you know, it brought up a lot of good questions, especially in the 50s and during this time, because people figured out, hey, we can actually play this game in a way where we could have a lot of chance of winning or a really good chance of winning, um, which was kind of cool. 
So I want to follow up with just one last game. And this is a new, newer TV show, um, at least newer than the Monty Hall show, um, Deal or No Deal. So you may or may not have seen this on TV or before, but basically the idea is there's, so there's one person that plays and there's 26 briefcases. And before you start, you pick one briefcase. So you can pick any briefcase you want and they consider that yours and they take it off to the side. And then you start picking however amount of briefcases they tell you. And basically what you're trying to do is win the most amount of money as possible. And every single briefcase has a dollar amount and the dollar amounts are listed on the side. So there's 26 possible choices from one penny all the way to a million dollars and you don't know where they are and you're just trying to pick briefcases along the way. And then there's going to be a banker that gives you a deal and you're going to either get to take his deal or her deal um, or you can keep um, playing. And so we're going to simulate this game for a little bit. And actually, while we do it, I'm going to get out of my presentation for a minute um, and I'm going to pull up my calculator. And if you have a calculator with you, you could certainly get it out if you want to calculate with me, because what we're going to do is we're going to, um, as we play, we're going to calculate the probability of winning. And we're going to use that to figure out if the deal we're offered is actually a good deal. So, okay, so my calculator is coming up. I'm going to click on this here. And let's see. I'm going to play. Okay, there we go. Let me get back to deal or no deal. Okay, so I'm going to hit play. And then I'm going to bring down my calculator. Okay, does anybody, if you guys want, you can help me pick some briefcases so you can put it in the chat. So we have to choose our case, throw out a number. Okay, 18, so we're gonna pick our, our briefcase. So this is the one that we're gonna keep. Okay, now I need six more. So, and these are cases that um, are gonna become not an option. So as we pick them, they that dollar amount goes away. Okay, so Paula says seven, do seven. Nice one. So that's a good one to get because that had a penny in it. So that means now that's out. So we, we don't want that one anyway because there wasn't a lot of money. So I'm going to go ahead and pick some. If you have any preferences, go ahead and put it in the chat. Excellent. Okay, so that was good. $25 went out. Nice one. Also good. We've got a 26. Nice one. That was good too. Okay, this normally never goes this well. Normally I'm picking briefcases with big big dollar amounts. Okay, so we got 23. Excellent. Okay, this is, I think, the best result I've ever had. 20. Okay. Not too bad, though. Okay, so we have five seconds to choose, or 10 seconds. So the banker will give us $33,163 just to walk away, or we could keep playing. Do you think that's a good deal? Should I take it or keep playing? <laughs> so we're going to keep playing, but what we're going to do before we start playing is I'm going to calculate real quick, just it's called expected value, which is really just an average. It's a weighted average of all the cases that we have to see on average what would happen. And all we have to do is add up these dollar amounts and then divide by the total number of cases. So I'm going to add up all of the brief cases that are still available. So I have a dollar, I have $5, I have $10, I have $50. Let's see, I've got $100, I have $200, I have $400, okay, and then I've got all of these too. So I'm just going to add up the first, so we've got 1000 and then we've got 5000 and we won't do this every time, but I'm going to do it this time just so we can see. 25,000, 50,000, and got to make sure we're real careful with all those zeros because if we get one off, then it'll throw our average off. So I'm going to add up $100,000. Okay, and now $200,000. And then 
and 300, couple more. And 500. And then we've got a million and 750. I'm just gonna put these together. So we got 1 million and then 750,000. Okay, so I'm gonna add that up and then I'm gonna count all of the briefcases that I have. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I have 20 briefcases left. So I'm gonna divide this number by 20. And this tells me that on average, so the average amount would be $375,863. So is $33,000 a good deal? That basically means on average, if I added all these up and divided by the total, I get $375,000 plus some change. And he, the banker offered me $33,000. Not a good deal. Yeah, absolutely right. Not a good deal. Which that happens, right? It's a TV show. So the goal is for us to lose and them to win. So definitely no deal. Okay, let's throw it. So we got to pick five more. Anybody want to tell me which ones to pick? Okay, so let's pick eight. Okay, that was good. I'll pick 15. Nice one. Not bad. Okay, we got 13. Excellent. Ooh, a dollar. We're doing so well. I've done this Excellent. with so many classes and I'll tell you, it's, it never goes as well. Okay, we got one more. Anybody want to do the last one? Got 13. How about 12? Oh, 14. I'll do 14. Nice one. Yes, that was good. Or no deal. $79,000. So let's think. If we added up all these numbers on the right, think of how big those would be. A million, 750,000, 500,000. We add all these up and divide by the number of cases. I can tell by just by looking at it, 79,000 is way too low. Okay, let's pick four more. So you can throw out a number if you want. Nice one. Got 22. That's okay. We still got some big ones in the game. We got 20. Uh, oh no, I already did that one. All right. I'll pick, let's see, I'll pick 21. Nice one. 50,000. Okay, one more to go. 25. Oh, Not bad. We still have some big ones. No deal. So again, imagine we're going to add all these up. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and we average. I can tell you that average is way over ninety-two thousand. So I'm going to say no deal. No deal. That's the spirit. Time for the next round. Anybody want to pick one? I'll pick six. Ah, <sighs> uh, sorry guys, I should have waited for you. Excellent. You guys pick better numbers anyway. And he says eleven. See, it's just me. Deal. I gotta stop picking. No deal. I'm gonna say no deal. No deal. I think That's we can win. Okay, two more. Round. You wanna pick? Don't make me pick because we're gonna lose. <laughs> 24. Yes! 50 bucks! You got some big ones still there. We got 19. Nice one. Deal. Okay, or I'm gonna no. say no deal. Very brave. Almost done. Okay, round. I can't pick it. One of you have to pick it. Okay, good. So that's not bad. So we've got $5, $10, 500, 1,000, and 500,000. What would you do? Would you keep playing? If we average those numbers together, we're going to get a, over $100,000. So I think it was good that we kept playing. What do you think? Oh, we're going to pick one. Excellent. Deal. Or no deal. See, I think these bankers off the bankers offer is low. We're gonna, no deal. That's okay. the spirit. It's what do you think? The next round. Okay, we're gonna do three. Excellent. Deal. Or so no five hundred dollars, a thousand, or five hundred thousand. Would you take the deal of one hundred and eleven thousand and walk away? So if I was playing, I would definitely take it. But since this is a computer. Let's just keep playing. All right, we got to pick one. What do you think? 17, 17 it is. Ah. Deal or no deal. 
I would still pick that deal, but let's just keep going. Why not? Right. Very brave. Time for the next round. So this is a really good question. Sometimes people argue that this, this game is like the Monty Hall game. And they say, if you switch to a different briefcase, it's actually a better, better option. Probability wise, it's the exact same though, because with the Monty Hall problem, we were, the host was revealing something else that changed. So what do you think? Pick 18 or 12? Any thoughts? I guess we're not winning the big bucks, so it doesn't matter at this point. I'll pick our, oh, hey, there you go. You want a thousand bucks and you want a car today. So that's not bad. So next time somebody tell or somebody asks you about the Washington steam sessions, you should say, I want a car and a thousand dollars. So it worked out pretty well. <laughs> we'll have lots of people coming. Okay. So that was our last game. I do have one last slide though, just because I thought it would be fun to um look at some careers that involve statistics and probability in case you're interested um and the first one i want to talk about the first one real quick before you go actuarial science if you like math this is actually a really cool job um and people that actuarial scientists are people that use probability to look at the chances of certain things happening like people getting into car crashes or maybe um needing um to get some sort of medical um, test done, um, and they help companies decide how much to charge people. Um, biostatisticians, engineers, biologists, finance people, mathematicians, tech teachers um, in economics, there's lots of different careers that involve probability, and there's more than just are on this list. So these are just a couple, but um, I hope you enjoyed today's session, and it was good to, to have you guys, Asian A and, and Lauren, um, and I hope you guys have a good day.